Good afternoon. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News. Summit Combined Housing Authority, the gatekeeper for local workforce housing, is searching for its fourth new executive in three years. I don't know if turmoil, but turnover, certainly, and I think that, unfortunately, has been a bit of a theme for us. That was Ryan Highland, town manager for Silverthorne and chairman for the Housing Authority Board. The impact this is having on locals who need housing runs deep. It is summed up last night at the Frisco Council meeting by Alex Beach. I've been here 10 years. I have four jobs and I don't qualify for any housing because my copper hours don't count for Frisco and my Frisco hours don't count for copper. Happening this week in Keystone, today through Friday, is a regional housing conference hosted by housingnow.org. In town for the conference are housing authority pros from the high country, the front range, and as far as Montana. Summit County is shaking hands with the feds over a new housing partnership above Dillon Valley where the county will build workforce apartments on forest surface land. But what about Dillon? Town Manager Nathan Johnson. Signing the lease is a, a great step forward. However, there are still a couple of different variables that still need to be remedied and worked through here in the, the short term. Dillon will commit sewer and water to that project. Still in limbo are road improvements. Stormy waters at Frisco Bay Marina, where boat owners are clashing with beachgoers. Slip holder Liz Ritchie from yesterday's council meeting. We paid for access, and that's why we need to have a place to park. That's what we paid for. The beachgoers, the bikers, the paddleboarders, they have not. Council is now reviewing its paid parking strategy there at the marina. Ritchie and other boat owners beg of them, make it easier and more enticing to use the marina. Frisco Town Council could soon be getting a double-digit pay raise, $9,000 per year for council, that's up 25%. $15,000 for the mayor, that's up 20%. This would make Frisco Council one of the highest paid in the mountains, bumping it past Vale and even Crested Butte, but still behind Breck, Telluride, Steamboat, Snowmass, and Aspen. Frisco is also pitching a child care stipend, 80 bucks per meeting for any council member who needs child care. Summit County is holding an open house today for its new comprehensive plan known as Blueprint Summit. Learn more about how this plan will guide housing, roads, open space, and more for at least the next decade. That open house is today, 6 to 8 p.m. at County Commons in Frisco. Today in our Summit School Board election series, we hear from Gail Westerberg, a one-time teacher, principal, and advisor for Summit Schools. I saw the ups and downs in the last four years. What I can also tell you is I've seen some of those ups and downs since 1980. Westerberg promises to fight for teachers. Our human capital, uh, the strength that we have in our district is uh, the talent of the teachers that we have. Westerberg is the only career educator running this election. If elected, she will be one of just two on the board. Perhaps I won't ask more questions if I am serving on the school board, but I might ask different questions. Tune in again tomorrow for our final school board interviews. This week on the State of Summit, we asked a local education expert, Van Scholes, with Keystone Policy Center to explain why school board elections seem so divisive. Folks on the left and the right are far more engaged in who gets to decide, let's say, what kinds of books there are or the governance structures of schools. Scholes believes this is nothing new. Parents have argued for decades over banned books and sex ed. So of course politics are part of it. School board elections are supposed to be nonpartisan, but that doesn't mean that they're not political. Then what is the solution? Being honest with the community around, we're able to do X, Y, and Z well, but we're really struggling with this one thing and we need your support. But he says communication is more complex than sending mass emails or forming lots of committees. If there's really high quality communication between teachers and families and then families and school leaders, I think you can build on that. Tune in again next week for the State of Summit on Crystal 93. Local fire danger remains moderate today with no fire restrictions. In sports, the Avalanche opened the regular season tonight against the Kings at 8 on TNT. And in local sports, Summit High Mountain biker Fiona Florio is making a run at the JV State title. She's been top two at every race this season and sits in first atop the rankings. She could clench the title next weekend, October 21st, at the state race in Glenwood. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News.